Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another makeup roundup. Today we are gonna be talking about all of the makeup I used in December, and we're also gonna talk about any empties that I have. So if that sounds good to you, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think, and if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So how are you? I'm well, and I'm ready to talk about everything that I tried in the month of December. It is hard to believe that we have just embarked on a new year, but I have been saying it. I got it from a Mel Robbins podcast. I'm walking into one of the best years of my life, and I hope that you feel the same way about yours. And if not, start saying that to yourself. So that, that will come to fruition because that's what we want. Life is too short to be already saying this year is not going to be a good one. It's going to be great. It's going to be one of the best. Now, let's go ahead and get started. I always leave the eyeshadow palettes for last. So what do I want to start with? Let's start with lips. And I know I do have some empties, so I don't want to be dilly-dallying. Now, <laughs> oh, that's mascara. Let's go ahead and start with this a blend bunnies lip oil oh my gosh this one and the black one i got the black one first i don't know if i talked about it in a makeup roundup but the black one should be probably with this blue one but mm, the black one's always like on me <laughs> i love this lip oil i think it is so nice and it reminds me a lot of the dior lip oil if you're into that one so I was really happy about the quality. I love this blue tint. And once you rub it in, I mean, your lips don't really look that blue, but there's just a little hint of it. Uh, these lip oils are from the Sickly Sweet collection, the blue one and the black one. The black one, I love that too. It actually reminds me of another product I'm about to mention. If you had your eyes on the lip oils from Blend Bunny Cosmetics, I would buy those without hesitation. They are very nice and they're $12, super affordable. I also have this, I don't even know what this is called. Type in what it's called, cause I'm not sure. But I remember when these products came out from Guerlain, these like marbly uh, gloss style product. And they also have a bomb product as well. Now this one I believe is called, I was about to call it black, black pink. And I don't know if that's, what it's called. I got this from Sephora when Dr. Ash and I were in Las Vegas and she got one too. This reminds me a little bit of the Blends lip oil, but it gives more of a plum tint. I really like this a lot. I would not mind trying this in another shade or two, but in our end, not right now. I think I did pick the best color for this one. This is by Givenchy. I don't know if I said that or not. I have two products here from Huda Beauty. I know I pulled these out because in December I did review the Pretty Grunge palette. So I have this Demi Matte lipstick in the shade Boss. And I don't know when I bought this. It's very deep, very vampy. And I also have a Demi Matte in the shade Mogul. This is a mini here. Mogul's the shade that I will wear more, but these are both great, very comfortable matte lipsticks. And you know, now that I have tried more matte liquid lip products, I can definitely say that these are really nice. I'm sure I got these on a sale at some point. Lastly for lips is not a new product. This is one of my Gucci matte lipsticks, and this is in the shade Nelly Cherry. I don't really like red lipsticks or deep red lipsticks that's why I always talk so highly of the Lisa Eldridge Cinnabar velvet matte lipstick but I also speak very highly of Nelly Cherry and I really like this because to me you can make this look more like a lip stain it's not super super like clown red and there are some people that look fantastic in red lipstick like my friend dr ash she's one of them she always looks good in red lipstick i feel like on me i have to be very careful with reds as well as the type of blush that i'm going to use when i wear a red lipstick because i do feel like it makes me look like a clown so nelly cherry is like the best cherry red kind of lip stain depending on how you put it on but you see how it 
can be diffused out nicely and I, I really do like these I have two of these I have this shade and they met in Argentina and I'm really curious about the glosses that they just came out with but in RN not right now boring <laughs> no I, I can't get it right now I know it's so boring but that's all I used that was worth mentioning for my December lipsticks. I mean, I have things I use every month, like my Dior lip shines. I use those all the time. My Maybelline vinyl lip inks. So I'm not going to include those every time. But if there's something that was new that I purchased or something that really stood out, I do like to include them in the monthly wrap up. I actually do have two other lipsticks and they're from Melt Cosmetics. I am just going to talk about the Fatal Yours collection as a whole. So I'm going to hold off on those. I'm not going to the store. What do you need? My milk. What's wrong with the milk? Doesn't isn't there milk left? Yeah. Can you drink that? And then I'll get some more milk tomorrow. Uh, no, for today. No, I'm not getting any more milk today. Not my milk. Y'all gonna have to come get him. All right. We're gonna talk next about blush, bronzer, and any face palettes that were standouts for me this month. Let's start with bronzer. I pulled out my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I pulled out the shade three, which is tan. I do have a little bit of pan in here, so I'm gonna continue using this. It's hard for me to say what makes one bronzer better than another when they're all kind of on the same level, you know? So I think this is a nice bronzer. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna continue using it. I've had it for a while and it was expensive, so I'm gonna continue to use it. I also have the Chanel Le Beige Sunkiss Medium Oversized Healthy Glow Sunkiss Primer. This one is, I can use this as a bronzer, but I can also use it on my face just to give me some color because I am pretty pale. So I might do it, you know, just to kind of match everything up. But I really do like this. I have Sunkiss, which is the medium, and I have Sunbath, which is the deep one. And that one is definitely a bronzer. This one, I mean, you can, can't really see it on my fingers, but it adds warmth to the face. So another expensive product that I will use until I can't use it anymore. I do have ooh, my Pat McGrath Desert Glow Bronzer. Now this is the one that you can see little glitter flecks in them. And thankfully you can't see them on the face. I like this bronzer as well. And because I like all the ones I have, I probably just don't need to buy any more bronzers. I have enough and I have so many different like bronzer formulas. So I'm not gonna be buying bronzer for a minute, but I do like this one. Again, this has some glow to it in the form of a glitter. That's not my preference. My preference would be that there's a sheen, but it's not from these flecks. I think Pat did a great job with her bronzer. I have this one and I think it's called Bronze Nirvana maybe. So they're both really nice, you know, not standouts. So, you know, there's that palettes let's talk about hourglass now these are my hourglass holiday blushes from last year and i probably should mention this one too the snake palette i use these all the time so I, do i need three no but they're worth the price point for me because of how much i use them if i don't know what i'm gonna do i can always pull out one of these and use them for the eyes and the face and keep it pushing. I have a setting powder, a highlighter. I have all the things that I need. I do hope that Hourglass will continue to improve these in the way of making sure that each face palette has the same type of products. And I just remember that really being an issue last year. I can't remember this year or last year, meaning 2022. I can't remember if the same issue was there in 2023. One of the palettes would have like two setting powders two highlighters and two blushes and then this one had a bronzer blush two setting powders and a highlighter like they just weren't all created equally and i just thought that was very odd for the brand it just didn't make sense it's like is that your way of trying to get people to get to because no no so i really like the elephant one but I, the tiger one i would say has to be my favorite this was just the first eyeshadow palette from hourglass that I saw that really looked different because a lot of them look similar. And maybe out of all three, the snake. Ooh, honey, the snake is that girl. Yes. So I use these all the time. And I know they've been in roundups before. And then we have the NARS All That Glitters palette. 
I do like this one, but I don't like it better than my Afterglow. I think with this, you do have to go into it a little harder to get the pigment up, but the formula is beautiful. Very beautiful blushes. These are like blushes that have shimmers and sheen, and I just think they're, they're all pretty. And then you have two highlights. Yeah, two highlights and four blushes. I mean, this is just something I would definitely take on a trip, and this would be the only thing that I take as far as blushes are concerned. I think my Afterglow though is, is my favorite, but I, I do like these NARS blush palettes. This blush palette is an oldie but goodie, and this is my Orgasm X blush palette. I probably had this for three years. This is when the Orgasm X blush was first released, and I really love, love it. It's this one here. This is a regular Orgasm, and that's the highlighter. I still use this a lot considering how long that I've had it. Make sure it smells okay. So just wanted to mention that. I really do try to not forget about my products. It's hard because I do have a lot, but I always try to circle back. Now my new blush baby for the month, I did purchase this in Sephora when I went to Las Vegas as well. This is from Givenchy. So two new products from Givenchy. That's my first time trying a brand, right? Yes. So we have a Prisme Libre blush or I, Prisme Libre, I can't remember right now. But this is Organza Cien. This is number four. A loose blush might not always be the most convenient to use, but I really like the shades in here. I just shake it up, get some of the powder in the top and go ahead and use my fluffy brush to put it on. I mean, these are kind of like those... Um, like brick red, kind of dusty, maybe dusty coral. Maybe that's what you would say. A sienna type color. Not quite terracotta, but I would say not too far off from that family. So these are really, really nice. I know they have like the loose highlighters and everything. I don't really make it a habit of getting loose blushes, but I do like this one. I think the finish is very lovely. So that's it. And I think we're gonna go ahead and get right on into the eyeshadow palettes. Let's talk about Machina from Blend Bunny Cosmetics. Ooh, this palette blew me away. And now I know the end of the year, they come with it. And I don't know if it was like that other years, but I'm sure that's gonna be the same this year. This palette really blew me away. The packaging, the story behind the palette, I do have a video with this and I did three really beautiful looks. And I just thought this palette was so well done. The color story really did shock me a bit in the beginning, but this ended up being on like one of my top 15 palettes of 2023. And it actually led me to make a couple more Blend Bunny purchases before the end of the year. So I will be uh, delving into those palettes very, very soon. So I was really happy to try this one out. I'm glad that I did purchase it. Not to mention, she keeps the price point reasonable. Donasa, this is Light Work 5. I still only use two shades in here, but I don't care because I used it. I've swatched others, but I use this with Xenon mashup as well as in Vegas for the content creators and friends party. And I really stayed within like these oranges here because I thought that with the gray was beautiful. I cannot wait to really, really get into this palette. It's my first Danessa Myricks light work palette because the other one looked weird. I don't know, it was like water activated. And then the first one had the creams and that was actually the third one. And I don't have the original two. So really excited to get into this in 2024 and really just give this palette its flowers. I also love the fact that people were able to get this for, I want to say like 35% off during Black Friday. So that's just something for me to note that she does have her new releases included in sales, which I think is great because a lot of brands will have everything else on sale, but the new things are not included. So I love that about Danessa Myricks. I'm not gonna spend hardly any time on the Xenon palette. It's probably gonna be an every month video. Just know, palette of the year, surprise palette of the year. I, I love this palette. I have never been so excited to have a companion palette like this one. And it just let me know, like, you like grays, like these blue grays, purple grays, beige grays. There's so many variations to grays. And I don't think I realized that before purchasing the Xenon palette. That was another of my top 15. Lightwork was a top 15. 
yeah, Machine was the top 15. So you see all these winter releases really stood out amongst all the palettes that I've tried this year. This one here, Cosmic Brushes. This put Cosmic Brushes in my priority brands list. You keep the price right. One or two multi-chromes. You got a bomb shimmer formula, bomb matte formula. And this is just the most beautiful, winteriest, frosty palette. I love this palette a lot. And this is the closest to snow that I want to get is this palette. I'm so excited to continue to use that and maybe mash it up with something else because I'm not always going to be in the mood for this palette, but it's gorgeous. That would look nice with Xenon as well. I mean, what wouldn't look nice with Xenon? We have the Midnight Serenade palette from none other than Lethal Cosmetics. This is another palette. This almost made it into the top 15, but ooh, this one came at the very end. Love this palette and love what you can do with it. It's nice and petite. The Lethal Formula is great. They have beautiful mattes that blend out very well. They have shimmers that I think look really nice when you use them with like a setting spray or a glitter glue. They look nice without it, but I, I like to have that extra pop. And I just love the thought behind most of their releases, not the 7 ones, but some of their 15, well, this is their first 15 pan palette. But like the 12 pan ones that they come out with, I really have enjoyed the ones that I have and I've enjoyed the palettes that I've created using the palette designer. And this was a $45 palette. So once again, Lethal doing big things. They also did come out with two mascaras that I really like. I got the white one to use just maybe for fun looks or as a eyelash primer, like if I'm gonna use something that's colored. And then I got the brown one too. And I like both of them. Biba, Natasha Denona. This is like a classic favorite. I don't see myself really going on vacation without this palette. And I just will always love this palette. I'd love to see Natasha Denona do a variation of this palette in the midi. That would be great. Like it doesn't have to be the same shades, but like a 2024 Biba, I think that would do really well. Ooh, Natasha hasn't done an all matte palette, has she? Tosh, let me know because Natasha Denona is probably my number one priority brand. Because I look at my collection and I see what it's comprised of and a lot of it's comprised of Natasha Denona. So really excited to see what she's going to do this year. I know she has some stuff up her sleeve. Fantasy Cosmetica. No, I have not done a video on this. I actually just threw a look together with this fighter palette to go out with my sister to a Halloween party. I mean, I actually threw a look together with this palette to go out with my sister to a holiday party. And oh my gosh, like y'all were not lying. It's not so much the formula. The formula is phenomenal. It's great. It's the curation of the color story for me. It's being able to have the fighter scent to go along with the fighter palette. Like, look at this. I'm just, I don't know. Like, I can't say enough positive things about Fantasy Cosmetica right now. So I'm so excited to see what she's gonna come up with this year. If you are wondering, this smells like hot chocolate. That's exactly what it smells like. If you don't wanna smell like chocolate, you know what I'm saying? Chocolate fighter, I don't know. I mean, it would definitely make me feel confident that I'm gonna win smelling like this. Mm. It's really good, like it's chocolate, but then it actually calms down a little. You can smell a hint of something else. I don't know if it's floral or what. I don't know, I did a video on them. All right, <laughs> Chanel. Mm. This is the Ombre de Lune. I had not done a review on this collection from 2022, and I was like, let me do it. Oh. One of my favorite looks it was just so classy so golden like this gold shade right here do not let the luxury beauty fool you don't let people tell you that it's trash because that's not true expensive yes but some of this indie stuff out here y'all I, mm, I also did use a highlighter it was like a rose gold it was called or rose and i really like that too really like this saw this on makari this one in Mediterranean, like you can get them for like 30 something dollars, which is crazy to me because I know I pay like 65. So check out Macari if you're interested in any like luxury stuff, because I did do a video with the Dior Quince and 
check Macari, y'all. Seriously. Like, there's one up there right now for, like, $25 and $4 shipping. And they're selling for $68. Out of control. Why do I have this? Did I use this? I must have used this for something. But I, I don't feel like I did. But I'm still not sure. I feel like I just haven't given this a chance that it deserves. So I'm going to have to go back with I need a new. Let me know. I got to do more with this one. I don't know why it's here. I really don't think I used that in December. So and you got to be seen on camera and you didn't even belong. All right. Next up, we have Element 115 from Adept Cosmetics another beautiful release from adept cosmetics this isn't my favorite one of the year i love inspired and samaria sunset just because those are my colors but this is so beautiful and these mats like there were no wasted mats not that the other ones were wasted but i think for people with richer skin tones some of those light mats just weren't it maybe we only needed one but this one no wasted mats here and they're all different i think this palette is spectacular I think my favorite look was a purple look that I did. I With these, I, I kind of just want to be a little more monochromatic. Like, I really do like the purple, but the blues, I know they give me the blues. It has to be a certain type of blue for me to really like it. But quality-wise, I think this fits so well in the Adept lineup of palettes. And you can always mix and match the shades because they are magnetic. So I cannot wait to see what Adept is doing in 2024. I'm very excited. We next have the Pretty Grunge palette from Huda Beauty. Did a review on this. Love this. I can see myself continuing to get Huda's large palette release every year. She always does a great job with them. Always. I always think they look different. I know she has some similar mattes as far as her matte style goes, but I don't know. Overall, like the themes are different. The only thing I didn't really like in this palette is this shade right here, which is a cream, the shade grunge. I can't use this maybe as a liner if I top it with a shadow, but I don't see the point of doing that. I definitely can't use it as an eyeshadow base. It dissolves by the end of the day and it does crease. So that's the only shade that misses out. But the year before that, it was the Petri Dish shade. That was the same type of texture that eye gloss type texture it doesn't work for me let me know if they work for you but it doesn't work for me uh the shimmers in here are beautiful the mattes perform well different uh shimmer formulas i really like this one this is called rebel look at that really beautiful shade and some are a little less exciting like this one more of a, a satiny type of shimmer but there's some different formulas here i just think this is a great palette it's one that you could use every day it's one that you could glam up so great job with this palette i love the packaging as well she did a great job in my opinion and lastly we're going to talk about whew, i would have to say the most disappointing collection that's the Melt cosmetics and bailey Sarian fatally yours collection it's the one that i was the most excited about but I had the most disappointment you know expectation is the mother of disappointment they say i just was putting everything into this palette because i always root for melt but melt them rooted themselves off the any list i have because of the lack of consistency and i don't know what it is but sometimes melt has these shades where when you put them on they do not look how they do in the pan and i think it is the craziest thing i have experienced that with the Gemini 2 palette where all the shades look the same and these I don't know if eyeshadow does it oxidize because I swear these shades oxidize even this blue which I'm like oh my gosh that's so bright no I love this blue though I have to say that but when you put it on it is deep it is so hard for me to explain this but it is because I remember using the shade thallium and I'm like, ooh, it's this like beautiful fall. It was so deep on my eyes. Like it didn't look black, but it was just, I don't, I can't explain it. The biggest gripe I have with this palette is that the mattes were fading and they were fading before I was done the look or they were patchy. 
And I thought, okay, maybe it's because this is a pressed pigment palette, but it is an eyeshadow palette. It's not pressed pigment. So I just, I just don't know. I have to go and venture that the palettes made in Italy are just better quality. So I'm gonna stick with my Amore Mary poses. I have dismantled several melt palettes and taken shades out that I don't like and I have not looked back. I did it with 420, I did it with Millennial Pinks, I did it with Rust, I did it with Mary Jane. I've done it with so many of my melt palettes and it made me think while that was fun, what's the point? Like you're spending a lot of money. This is a $58 palette. What is the point of getting a palette that you have to take apart? I did it with Brunette. I'm understanding that more things than not with Mel, I'm disappointed in. So as much as I love the aesthetic, as much as I love the owners, as much as I love the idea, as much as I love the thought and the vision, the vision is not hitting for me. You know, it's just not. So I don't know. I wasn't into those Nightmare Before Christmas palettes either. I'm waiting on Edward Scissorhands. I love Beetlejuice though. Wear tape wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I just was like, I got to move it down. And then the sales that they were having is no point of buying anything for regular price. Because if you can put your whole site 40, 50% off, that's what I'm waiting for. So I was back and forth on getting the dark matter palette. It was 25 bucks. I mean, the brushes were cheap. Everything was cheap. The lipstick was $5 and I bought one and that was dumb because y'all these lipsticks from this collection. No, mm-mm. I feel like those lipsticks would cut me. They're just rough. They're dry. And I don't know when they went to this formulation, but very dry. The colors are great. Melt has so many different colors. And when I watch Laura put them on, she don't look like she's struggling the way I am. So I'm like, I don't know, but I'm, I'm on the struggle bus here. This is the shade Nutmeg, which I thought, I mean, right up my alley. It's just rough. And I don't feel like in our year of 2024 that there's an excuse for bad shadows and rough lipsticks. There's too many good brands out there and they're not all expensive. So mm -mm. this is Hemlock. Very beautiful. And I was worried about the little pattern going away, but I don't have to worry about it because guess what? I'm not using them. So I don't feel like finessing it, putting something on. I have things that are around these colors that I don't have to do that with. I'm in the year of ease. Like, why are we trying to make it work? No. I do also have the Nightshade Ultra Matte Gel Liner. I do like this product from Melt and they last a long time. I have some that are three years old and they are absolutely fine. It's like they're brand new. So I do like this. These dry down is a nice eyeshadow base. I'm trying to think. I can't remember if these crease or not, but I know they dry down, you know, but I could have done without this. I mean, this would have been nice to have if I'm going to use the collection, but now I'm not using the collection. So point. <laughs> could have saved my money on that. Um, oh, there's one more thing I want to grab really fast because I don't want to forget. I have here the Sol de Janeiro Delicia Drench Body Butter. Y'all, this is a thick one, so I'm telling you, look. First of all, hello. Like it is thick. It is going nowhere. And I really like it. Now I did hear something about it attracting spiders, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing well. So I really like the way it smells. Coconutty vanilla. Something in it reminds me of like yogurt or yeast a little bit, but I really like this. And I know they are Oh, it has a prebiotic hibiscus and Brazilian soothing complex. Well, I love it. I would like to try the scent, which is going to be releasing soon. So I will let you know how that is. And that's going to be it for the roundup. Now I'm going to grab my empties can and we're going to see what's in there. Before we grab the can, I do over there. I just can't reach it. I have my Odin's Eye Snow Dream palette. You know those were no, right? Like, why did I buy those two new palettes? Very lackluster just should have kept my Christmas ones from last year and they should have just pushed that release to the spring because we could have gotten away with that for a spring release as well as the reindeer one which I'm not even giving that one a chance so now I'm gonna grab my empties can I do have quite a few products in my empties can 
So first let's start with this tea tree oil. This is Rada tea tree oil from Amazon. I use tea tree oil for everything. I like to put a few drops in the shower. I put it on cuts. I put it in my hair. I mean, tea tree oil is pretty much an all purpose oil and I like to always have it in the house. So I will repurchase that. Sometimes I change up the brand, but I look at a lot of reviews first. I have Miel Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. This is my second one of these. I use this on the boys. I use it on myself as well, just to keep my scalp oiled. I do like to put it on the ends because it's supposed to be good for split ends. It does help if you have a dry scalp and Marky definitely has a dry scalp. It's supposed to help improve your length retention. So we'll see. It's good for your follicles as well. I will continue to purchase that. I have my second Kiehl's Ferulic Brew Rejuvenating Facial Essence. And this is just really good to keep your skin radiant and moisturized. I love this. I usually put this on once a day, but I will repurchase this when they have a 30% off, but not right now. I've decided to make my Dua brand perfume in Unicorn Milkshake an empty. It smells horrible. It is terrible. I've let it sit for months and I'm done with trying to figure it out. It, you think it would smell great. I don't even want to spray it, but then something in it smells like sweat. So can't do it. Another product that I have from Kiehl's is the Midnight Recovery Omega Rich Cloud Cream. I also have the oil that goes with this, which is the concentrate. You put the cream on, then you do the concentrate. I'm gonna just do the concentrate right now. I really don't have any more money so I have to wait. So I will repurchase this, but NRN, not right now. I've got my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer, which I did repurchase this. Love this, it is so good. Mm, don't know if it's better than my Natasha Denona now though, but this has been my holy grail for some time. I have a butter AHA BHA Rose Water Toner. So I was just using this, this was a sample I had, so I'm trying to go through those. I would repurchase that in a full size, but I do have a toner from Kiehl's, so. Not right now, NRN. I do have the refill for the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. I'm gonna save this because I do have another one. I was gonna just get the refill, but the price of the refill was not much less than this sales special, which was a refill and the lip balm. So I did get that. I'm gonna save this container because I can use it for something else. From Pharmacy, I have the Green Clean uh, Melt Away Cleansing Balm. And this was a special fragrance. It was uh, upcycle blueberry seed oil. So I have two more that came in this uh, set that I'm using now. And lastly, I have my Holy Grail primer. It is the new glow in balm from YSL Beauty. And this is a moisturizer and a primer all in one. And I really like it because it just cuts out one step for me, especially when I'm getting ready for work. I have already repurchased this. That's my second one that I've repurchased and I'll probably continue to get this. I really like this primer a lot. I will mix it with my sunscreen, but I don't have to put on a separate moisturizer. So I love that. So those are my empties and those are the products that I tried or that I brought back out in the month of December. So definitely let me know some of your favorites down below and I am going to skedaddle and get on out of here. Thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another monthly roundup. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will definitely see y'all in the next one. Bye.